everybody moans about wargaming. I mean, everybody. We all moan about it, be it the MM, the containers, or the crates, or whatever you want to call them, to RNG. But you know what? There are some things they get absolutely spot on. And I'm going to look at the top five things I think wargaming get right. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz. And this is going to be a different type of video. I'm not going to moan about wargaming. In fact, I'm going to do quite the opposite. Wargaming get quite a bad rep, to be fair, from the player base. We all bemoan them for whatever reason. But you know, there are some things that we do take for granted, and there are some things that they get absolutely right. So we're going to look at my top things that I think Wargaming get right, that we all forget about. Now, before I start, the, you're going to see replays in the background. They have nothing to do with the video. They are just there for aesthetic purposes and because they're really good replays sent to be my by subs. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is tournaments. Now, I'm not on about the professionals tournaments here. I'm on about the quick tournaments, the ones that us mere mortals can take part in. We get a lot of tournaments, funnily enough. In fact, we get four a week. We get one on Sunday, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on a Friday. That's four tournaments. Now, tournaments don't affect your stats. They don't touch your win rate. They don't do anything to change your statistics in any shape or form. What they do do, however, is give you free credits. Yep, that's right. You heard me correctly. Free credits. Even if you don't get past the first round, you will still get a lot of credits. So, for example, if you're relatively new to the game and you don't have, or you're not comfortable in Tier 8 or Tier 10, you can go out in a Tier 5 or Tier 6 battle. And even if you all go out in a Tier 5 and come up against a team that is Tier 6, you will still get, as a team, 370-odd thousand credits split between you for those who played. I mean... That's free credits, guys. Regardless of whether you win or lose, you get free credits. And you get more credits, obviously, the further in you get. And the chances are you'll, you'll get a buy. If you go to Tier 8 or Tier 10, you get even more credits, even if you don't win. So what's the big deal? I mean, it's free credits, effectively. Now, a couple into that, you also get things like the Ascent Tour and the Bronze Series, which again, even if you don't progress, go into the first game and lose, you still get a shed load of credits. So, don't turn your nose up at tournaments, guys. Try and get a tournament team together. And if you can get one together, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you will still get one good experience and two free credits. It's not rocket science really so i think wargaming give us something there we get to play the game we get to hang out with our mates if you're in a clan or even if you're not in a clan because some of them are non-clan related it's only the, really the professionals tours that are clan related and you can play on touch or pc so stop mucking around get a team together and get out in a tournament get some free credits just for playing the game. Next, my number four. Different types of game mode. Now, we currently got the Uprising game mode, which is great. Previously, a week ago, we had the Gravity game mode, which was also great. And thrown into that, you have Realistic, you also have Mad Games, we have encounter, we have normal random mode, and we have ratings. Plus, we get tournaments, which we've just covered. So, again, these do not affect your stats, the, 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 the add-ons. So, ratings, uh, gravity mode, mad games, uprising, realistic mode, don't affect your stats in any way, shape, or form. They are just a fun mode. And again, you can win a shared load of credits. So, for example, I rolled out in Uprising the day it came out in a low, the Tier 8 German Heavy Premium Tank, 
and I got 200,000 credits, and I had a great time, and I got about, what, 2,500 free XP. These game modes are there to be embraced. They're not serious, guys. I mean, Mad Games, Uprising, Realistic, and, uh, and, and Gravity, they're not meant to be serious. They're meant to be a bit of fun, they're meant to be a bit of light relief, and take away the stresses and strains of you having to increase your win rate, etc, etc. Okay, so random battles and ratings are a slightly bit different, um, especially ratings, and I'll get to that in a moment. But embrace mad games, realistic gravity and uprising. Get out there, have a bit of fun, earn some credits while you're doing it. Ratings, that's the next one. I mean, this is also an underestimated game mode. We as a player-based community asked for more skill-based MM. And we were given it in the form of ratings. But the thing is, the player base hasn't really embraced it. And, okay, I can understand why to an extent. It's it's difficult. It's not the easiest game mode. And the prize is, if you're a veteran player, aren't exactly the best. However, you do get to brag about how good your skill level is. If you're Diamond League, you get to show a Diamond League avatar. And if you played enough games in one of the tanks... You can put your funky dunky Diamond League camo on it. This is fantastic stuff, realistically, and it's free again. You don't have to pay to play these games. And you can progress in ratings if you just put some time and effort in. Random is random. I mean, it, it's just there for us to play. But we do have a variety and quite a wide variety of different game modes. So we're not just stuck to random with its encounter in supremacy or ratings okay we don't always have the other game modes coming in but when they do they come in and boy they're good fun so wargaming do that for us they don't ask for us for anything we don't have to pay to do it and chances are you're going to get a lot of free xp and a lot of free credits i mean that's just fantastic which brings me on to my next thing they get right we actually have lots of content in this game funnily enough now we've already dealt with we get various different game modes in fact we get around five different game modes so we get random which includes encounter and supremacy so that's two game modes we get ratings we get tournaments and we get every now and then things like realistic mad games uprising etc so we get five different game modes four all the time five every now and then on top of that we have 28 maps not including the new lunar map that was only in the gravity event 28 maps that's that's a lot of maps when you think about it okay you may not like all the maps like i don't like dynasty's pill but the fact is we do have variety we have 28 on top of that we have 411 tanks okay some of those are going to include premium tanks of which there are 113 and collectible tanks of which there are 86 but that leaves 212 researchable tech tree tanks that you don't need to buy that is a lot of content okay you're not going to be able to get virtually all the tanks in the game realistically unless you're lucky enough to win things like the is6 fearless or you're lucky enough to have the kenny otsu but the fact of the matter is these are you know with, with the exception of one or two tanks there are 411 tanks that we can get they're all different no two tanks are the same funnily enough We've got four different classes. We've got light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, and TDs. And within all those classes, there are different parameters, different damage outputs, different armor, different maneuverability. The list is endless. We have a lot of varied content. And okay, some of the tanks may be rubbish, and some of the tanks may be really, really broken, but that doesn't matter. You have a vast selection of choice. And if, like I said, every tank is, in real terms, different. You can play 
to your heart's content, realistically, a different game every single time you roll out. You will have a different map, you will have different enemies, you, will have, you may even roll out in a different tank. And that is really good when you think about it. It's fantastic. It's a lot of work that goes in to give us that. And sometimes we take that for granted. And whilst we, the player base, like to rush through those tiers to get to those big guns at tier 10, it is structured enough to allow you to learn the game as you go through. On top of that, we've got varied consumables, different camos, different guns, different tracks, different engines. Oh, the list is endless. You can literally toy around with the tanks to your heart's content. But we don't do that. We generally don't do that. And then we bemoan wargaming and we say, oh, God, the game's boring. When actually, it's not. It's what we make of it. And they give us a lot of content. We just don't always utilize it, I'm afraid. So I think the amount of content we do get with the variations is fantastic. Which brings me to my number two, my next point. This game really is free to play. There are 212 researchable tanks compared to 113 premium tanks. There is nothing that says you need to drop a single penny on this game to progress. You don't. You can drop money, yes, and it will help you advance quicker. You can get your premium account, you get obviously double XP and double, X and double credits. But realistically, this is a completely free game. You can, if you're minded to, and you've got the time, and you're willing to take the time, go through the tech tree and get all the tech tree tanks and all the crew skills, etc., etc., completely free of charge, without spending a single penny. That is fantastic. I don't care how many ways you cut it. I don't care how many ways you turn around and say they're called war greedy or they're just after your money. You are actually given a completely free game. We, the players, choose to take the offers that Wargaming give us, with it being premium tanks, premium accounts, etc., etc. We choose to spend the money. They give us the opportunity to spend the money. They never force us to spend the money, however. This is not a pay-to-win game, despite a lot of people saying that it is. Because if everybody tomorrow morning decided we're not going to spend any more money on, to, on, on the game, then the game would die. A simple fact of life. But, for all intents and purposes, this game is completely free of charge. You do not pay to play ratings. You do not pay to play in tournaments. You do not pay to play in any of the game modes. They're free. You can just enter them. And if you progress or do well, you'll get credits back. Okay, you won't get shed loads of credits unless you're on a premium account, but you'll get credits back and you'll get XP. It bemuses me all the time that people only look at the one side of the coin. And that coin is, oh, there's all these premium tanks. Oh, they're only in crates. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Guys, really, you do not need to spend a penny on this game to actually play it. Thing is, as I said, it will take you a lot longer to grind the tanks. It will frustrate you more and you won't advance as quick. But you can do it. Trust me on that. Which brings me to number one. The very last thing, and the thing I think Wargaming really do very well, and it's totally, totally forgotten about. We get a shed load of free stuff from Wargaming, funnily enough. You get three containers, small containers every day. You really do, and they will include maybe credits, sometimes they have gold, sometimes they have avatars, and they get you boosters. Then you get 
a medium container that also will generally contain any of those things boosters gold or credits or xp and an avatar and you get a large container you get these free you don't have to pay for them you can if you wish but you don't have to wargaming give you those for free on top of that twice a day you get missions yeah you get missions guys you get 20 missions a day that's right because you get 10 missions every reset so you get approximately tw you get actually 20 missions every day 11 if you include the video mission but i'll get to that in a moment so that's 20 missions you complete those missions then you will get every day minimum four boxes and those four containers will contain things like gold credits boosters etc etc so again you're getting this for nothing you're getting these things for playing the game every now and then you will then get your weekly rewards which are big containers and there are two of them and they normally have a load of free stuff in it as well so you get this for free you don't have to do anything other than play the game you don't have to buy the crates you don't have to buy the containers you get it for free based on how much XP and all that, so how many keys you, you, you actually can gain over the time. You then have an 11th mission twice a day. So you get two additional missions every day. And those missions give you 1,500 free XP for watching three video ads. That's 3,000 XP every day just for watching a video. That's what, 20 to 30 seconds long. You don't even have to watch it. You can just have it running in the background while you're, while you're doing something else, like making coffee or getting a drink or whatever. On top of that, you also get, every now and then, if you look, the ability to watch videos after a game. Now, those videos will either give you credits or gold. That's up to you to choose. Um, if you watch the ones in the garage, they will give you gold. If you watch the ones at the end of a replay or the end of a game, if you look closely, you can get credits. I mean, this is free stuff. No one's asking you to buy this. This is free. You just have to watch the videos and you get freebies. So you can get, I think it's approximately 50 gold or something every day for watching a video. And you can get quite a lot of credits every day for watching a video. This is freebies. You don't have to do anything. If you're part of a clan and the clan has worked hard, you also get clan storage, which actually gives you lots of free stuff. It gives you discounts on a lot of things. And if you're lucky enough, you can get 5% discount on all tier 10 vehicles and you can even get an is5 it's a free tank effectively what you've got to do is play the blimming game and all you've got to do is get your is make sure your clan researches everything up to up to tier 10 if you can do supply level 10 guys you're laughing you get discounts on almost everything from consumables in fact let's have a look at it you will get discount on all your consumables, all your provisions, you'll get discount on, well, virtually everything in the game. You'll even get slot purchases for credits. What, what, what more would you like to ask for? Seriously. Seriously. Not only that, we get free XP every time we play a battle. Every time you play a battle, you'll get free XP. And that free XP goes into your free XP pot, which you can use. Now, some of you have probably already got the tanks and you think, oh, I've got all this XP there and all I can do is convert it for gold. No, you can use that XP in your crew skills. Did you know that? So you can take the free XP that you have to convert from to, to you know, to use it into gold and you can use it to increase your crew skills up to level seven, which is exactly what I did. You get a lot of free stuff. Every now and then, you also get a free tank. Wargaming give you free tanks every now and then. Okay, they may not be the best tanks in the game. They may be lower tiers, but it's a free tank. And you know what? If you don't like the tank, sell it, and you'll probably get either gold or credits back. What more would you want? You get thrown a lot of freebies at you. And with all of this, we generally forget. And it, 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 
sometimes bemuses me how much we as the player base forget that war game gives us because they do give us a lot and i think war gaming sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap because they do give us a lot of stuff that we take for granted anyway i've been fujit and that has been the top five things that i think war gaming gets spot on tournaments different game modes lots of content it really is a free to play game and we get lots of free stuff by all means comment and everything below if you've got any decent replays wing them across to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or upload them to my discord server whichever is easier for you um, as always i'd like to thank my patreons because without them videos like this would be a lot harder to make funnily enough and in the current situation, I'd still want to say, guys, if where you can, please stay inside, stay safe, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that really is what this game is all about. Having fun and being happy. And as much as we like to moan about wargaming and look at the negatives, there are a lot of positives that we should also focus on. So, as I say, until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. And I hope you enjoyed the flying tanks, which I'm going to use a lot nowadays because I love flying tanks.